Monsters 101 Days of Noah Part 2. Now in Part 1, I left off with the word owl. And just I'm going to, there are six verses with the word owl in them. None of those six verses, none, are talking about an actual bird with wings. Not at all. 100% opposite is talking about a woman, a daughter. Now, just so you know, in ancient Hebrew here, the Sefer and the Septuagint, Greek, uh, it all aligns with King James Version. So nowadays when I read something, I read every verse, King James, ancient Hebrew, the way it was originally written, and the Septuagint as it was subscribed. Septuagint is just a fancy word for 70. 70 scholars got together over 15 years and put all of this ancient Hebrew into Greek. So it all aligns perfectly. None of it is contrary. And this is how I study along with the Hebrew lexicon. And I always go to the Liverpool University, founded in 1899, go to the Journal of Jewish Studies, to their archives, and I can back it all up with that, with the historians back then. Okay, let me get to it here because this is for moms who need to teach their kids who are born with gifts, uh, be it because they're hybrids they've been mingled with, or gifts of the spirit, doesn't matter. This is their life. This is what they'll be living. And you need to explain it biblically because the church, the Sunday school, the academia, they're the satyrs that's teaching these kids. They are the owls. They are the sirens. All right? And they will be considered divine beings. As we get into this series of videos, you're going to be shocked at what is going to be the carnival of divine beings marching down Main Street on a daily basis. We need to understand that. Now, the word owl, it's in six verses right here. Pause, write them down. I'm going to concentrate on Isaiah 34, 13. Sirens is in Isaiah 13, 21. I only have time to concentrate on a few verses since I go through King James, Septuagint, Ancient Hebrew, and through all of the concordance. This is a concordance study. Here we go. Um, in all six verses, the word owl, again, go through the concordance, that number is 1323. It means a daughter, period, a daughter. It's not a bird. It's not a fowl. It doesn't have wings. It's a daughter. It's a woman. All right. So just knowing that owl, the word owl, so then I got tripped up. It's like, okay, well, if owl is a woman, a daughter, there has to be something for owl. <laughs> there, that's got to exist, right? I had to go into the Septuagint. I had to go into, into this. I had to go into the lexicon. It takes work, but I found it. The word owl ends up, it's only in one place, Isaiah 34, 14. And if you look at owl in Isaiah 34, 14, you'll find that it is the word Lilith. Lilith, the, the person everybody calls Adam's first wife before Eve. If you listen to those people, well, Lilith is a real thing. Lilith is the name of an owl. That number for your studies is number 3917. So Lilith is the name of Al. That's how you pronounce Al. And what does it mean? It is a female night demon. It's real. It's immortal. It's been around since before Adam was in the garden. That's why they call it Adam's first wife. Lilith's been around since Genesis 1 was created. I'll get into that. How all of Genesis 1, what those things are created are demons. They've got a lot of fancy names. And one day, they're going to be considered divine. You know, get into the Septuagint on that one. Uh, again, not in this video, but I'm going to start breaking it all down for you. You need to understand the days of Noah like you've never been taught. That's my Holy Spirit assignment as of right now. Isaiah 34, 14, it says, The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet in with the wild beasts of the island. And the satyr shall cry to his fellow. The screech owl also shall rest there and find for herself a place of rest. So owls are always women for herself, a place of rest. Okay, keeping that in mind. Well, we better know it says the wild beast. Where we broke down wild beasts, they're not cows. All right, wild beasts are something extremely intelligent. Now, I'm going to get into how they come from this, the line of Esau and the Edomites, but right now, I'm focusing on owls, which are called 
in the ancient sirens. Okay, so in Isaiah 34, again, go to your concordance, King James Strong's concordance. Go there first, back it up in the lexicon, back it up in the Greek. It's, 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 it, it takes some work, it's tedious, but I'm trying to break it down in these little videos so you can teach your kids, right? That's what I care about, saving one soul. Now, what we know is the beast, all right, they uh, can be referred to or are called in other verses, I should say, the best way to say that is Seder. Seder is the he-goat. Now, it says in Isaiah 34, verse 14, uses the word the beast of the desert and the beast of the island. They're going to meet up. Okay, well, what is desert? That number 6728, it means wild beast, desert dweller, crier, yelper. I'm just going to put it out there. Has anybody ever heard the cries and the hideous voices of Bigfoot? Have you listened to people who have gone Bigfoot hunting? They don't know what they're doing. They don't have the blood of the lamb on them. You know, the last time I went out to film or talk to Bigfoot, I got it on film. My angel was right there in front of me. So I don't have to worry about that. But, you know, don't let your kids go on hunting without the Holy Spirit and the blood of the lamb on them. Anyway, so here, desert is nothing about desert terrain. It's not, it's not a desert. Okay, it's a wild beast who is considered a desert dweller. So the terrain of the desert is apparently where one of this race of beings, and that's what it is, a race of beings. Do you guys remember Genesis 25, 25? I put two nations in your womb. Look up the etymology of nations. Genesis 25, 25, God is talking to Rebekah. He says, I, I put two nations in your womb. Why did he do that? Well, it's none of your business why he did that. God does what he does, and only God knows why. It's none of our business. Nevertheless, Esau, when he, read it, when he was born, he came out a red, hairy garment. Not flesh. It didn't say flesh. It didn't say red flesh. It said a red, hairy garment. It is a nation. It is a race of people. And he, and he becomes a Gibberim. He becomes an Edom an Edomite, and God hates them forever. All right, another video, another time. Let's focus on the owls. Back to the desert, we'll meet up with the island. Well, okay. So here, the wild beasts of the island, as it says in Isaiah 34, 14. Island is the number three. You see, if you don't look this stuff up, if you think you understand what desert means and what island means, you're missing everything. And you're not going to have an answer for the kids when the days of Noah is your everyday parade down Main Street, all right? Island is number 338. It means a howling jackal. Does that sound like Hawaii? Does that sound like an island to you? <laughs> it's a howling jackal. And in the Septuagint, when we get into Isaiah 32, you'll find out that they're considered divine beings who will be dancing around, around us, among us. They will be worshiped. We'll get there. We'll get there. I'm trying to break it down so we can teach our kids. So island means howling jackal. So let's not think Hawaii and palm trees, all right? Now, again, I've already broken down wild beasts are also called satyrs that will be crying to his fellow, of which we do not know in this verse what will come in another verse, all right? You have to, you have to be patient. You got to take your time and realize Scripture interprets scripture. Sometimes a verse doesn't make sense and you've got to find it elsewhere. And you've got to go deeper. You may need to go into the Septuagint. You may need to go into the Sefer. This is ancient Hebrew. It's the way the Bible was written. It's the words it was written in. It's not modern day Hebrew. I'm telling you right now, keep your King James absolutely always. Keep your Strong's Concordance absolutely always. But go deeper. All right, let's look at what did they take out. That, that, that's all. They took out some stuff. But it's going to help explain the days of Noah to the kids in the way the church can't. They're program indoctrinated not to know that. So we're getting a little bit clearer picture on the days of Noah. I'm only talking a few verses so far. I'm just, just now looking at Isaiah 34, 14. Now that very verse is repeated in 2 Baruch. Man, Baruch. If you, if you guys don't, I'm in Isaiah right here, but yesterday I was all in Baruch. 
uh, it's, it's repeated almost verbatim, except there's a few other things said. But in 2 Baruch 10, 7 through 8, it's an angel actually talking to Jeremiah about the last days. And now in verse 8, instead of saying owls, it says sirens. Here's what it says. I will call the sirens from the sea and Lilin, remember Lilin is the owl. So we got sirens and owls. Lilin, who is a female night demon, um, and Lilin from the desert. Okay, now we got Lilin is coming from the desert. And then it says, and ye Shadim. Now, Shadim here, a little different number. It's number 589. If you go to number 589, again, you're going to need to go into the lexicon for this because I'm reading out of the Sefer. I'm reading from ancient Hebrew, that Shadim 589. And it's also in the Concordia. When you go in the lexicon, it gives you the Strong's number. So don't let that trip you up. All right, that number is 589. Devils is the same number, 589. When you, again, back it up with the Concordance. I back everything up. My study is not trivial. Okay, it's tedious, it's in-depth, and I, I, I leave no stone unturned. I'm doing the best I can. Um, so here, in Deuteronomy 32.17, if you, you need 32.17 on your refrigerator, all right? Put it on your refrigerator, make sure your kids understand Deuteronomy 32.17. It sums, it, it sums up days of Noah really well. Okay, what does it say? It says, they sacrifice unto devils, word number one, not to God, word number two, to be looking up in the concordance, and to God's, plural, word number three. Those three words are all three different, and you need to understand them. Your kids do. Maybe you don't, but your kids do, if you care about their salvation of their soul and not getting caught up in cultural pop iconography, all right? So, in Deuteronomy 32, 17, let me repeat that to its fullest. They sacrifice unto devils, not to God, to God's whom they knew not to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Okay, the Bible is telling you something. They didn't come newly up back in the days of the Israelites. They're coming newly up hour by hour, minute by minute, second by second. What are they? Well, let's look it up. <laughs> they tell us who they are. It's, it's, it's there for you to read. Now, again... In the Sefer, here you're going to see, again, in the, Sef in the Sefer and in the uh, Septuagint, sorry, uh, for owls, you'll see Lilin and or Sirens. In King James, you'll see owls. But when you go to the concordance, it's spelled out. Owl, I already told you, means uh, Lilith. Lilith in this one, Lilith and King James. It says Lilith and King James, and it, said, and it tells you. I'll, I'll try and pull that up and show you on my computer here in a minute. But I'm, I'm wrapping up uh, part two here. I'm not going to be able to get to all of it. Okay, so now when you go to Sirens in the Septuagint, because we need to understand that there's six verses. Um, but going back here, First, I'm going to have to put that in part three. Let's finish up Deuteronomy 32, 17. The three words here, devil, and then it had God singular, and it had God plural. So devil is the number 7,700. The word 7,700 means shade, shade. Shade, that's, that's phonetically what it's what it said. That's the root word, and it means demon. Now, let's take this seriously. What is a shade? And I think I'm going to need to pause here with end of part two so it uploads and really take my time and let's look at what shade is. Let's look at these demons are. Let's look at how many times it's in our Bible, through our concordance, through, through the entire King James, the Sefer, the Septuagint. Um, so let me just show you. Let me just pause here and show you some of my Bible tools. All right, this is the Sefer, if you're wondering about it. It has 88 books, not 66. 88. Uh, second Ezra, reading Ezra, Jasher, Enoch. I mean, this is enlightening about the days of Lola. Of course, you know King James, but you're going to need lexicons right here. 
is with all of the words right here, this is a Septuagint, you guys know that. All right, really back up. When you're reading something in King James, back it up in the Septuagint, and then get a, get a lexicon, all right? Right here is my Sefer lexicon with all of the names and places that has all of the words. And again, if you wanna learn how to read this stuff, this is from Liverpool University, their textbook on how to even understand and read this stuff. So I'm taking my studies seriously because I care about the days of Noah. It's just my gift of discerning spirits and it's just my part to you guys. All right, in part two, Potter done for now. More is coming, a whole lot more. I'm gonna spend the rest of the day uploading what I can.